everybody. As you know, my name is Lizard Boy. This first one I've got for you guys is what's called a Dumeril's Boa. Now, these guys come from an island near Africa called Madagascar. You guys ever hear of Madagascar? Yeah. yeah, just like the movie, but this guy's actually from that island. Now, he's just a baby. He's only about six months old. Maybe extra careful with this guy. There he is. Now, this kind of snake is what's called a constrictor. Do you guys know what a constrictor is? A constrictor is a kind of snake that doesn't have any venom. So instead of using venom to catch his food, instead what he'll do is he'll grab a hold with his mouth, he'll wrap it up really tight, he'll squeeze it until it passes out, and then he swallows it whole. And did you guys know a snake can swallow something that is 10 times the size of their head? It'd be like you and me being able to swallow a basketball. You want to swallow a basketball? No, it'd be a little uncomfortable, wouldn't it? Excellent. You feel? You can do it. Perfect. Ladies. He's kind of he's kind of short and fat, isn't he? Yeah. That's because he's that's because he's what's called a ground boa or a terrestrial boa. He lives on the ground. Tree snakes tend to be long and skinny, whereas ground boas tend to be short and fat because they want to be as small as possible. So if something's walking through the forest, they don't actually step on him. But they also want to be as powerful as possible. So he's got this big thick body, so he can be really strong. Now you see his pattern. Now he's what this is that that those colors. Not only do they make it pretty, but they're what's called camouflage. Now, these guys come from a place called a rainforest. Now, in the rainforest, there's so many trees that if you look up, you can't see anything but leaves. And those, those leaves are eventually going to fall off onto the ground, aren't they? Yeah. Well, that's what's called the leaf litter. As the leaves settle into the ground, they we create the leaf litter. And these guys like to hide in the leaf litter. So their camouflage, their pattern, is designed to look like the leaves, like shadows, and like sunlight. So the light brown on his skin looks just like the leaves. The dark brown looks just like the shadows from the leaves. And those little white parts here, the light parts, are, look like the little bits of sunlight they get through. So he's actually very, very well camouflaged for the leaf litter. Oh, we're going to put this guy away. His name is Boots. Whoops. Let's all say, see you later, Boots. See you later, Boots. Now, geckos, or most geckos anyway, have sticky toes. So they can stick to walls. Whoops. There we go. They can stick to walls. Or it can even hang on ceilings. But, now this guy got sticky toes for holding on. He's also got, he's also got a tail that grabs just like a monkey. Now I want everybody to hold your hand up like this for me. Whatever, like, I want everybody to close your fingers and make a fist. Okay, now I want you to open your hand up and bend your fingers as far back as they'll go. They go all the way in this way, right? When we try and go backwards, they don't go very far. But this guy here can actually make a fist this way, and he can make a fist backwards. He just sets the tops of his fingers to the back of his hand. That's because the sticky part of his toes is right here. And it is so sticky that if he couldn't pick up his toes a little bit at a time, he wouldn't be able to lift his feet. Touch it. You feel him? You can feel him. Be gentle. Wonderful. His eyes are so big because he's what's called nocturnal. Does anybody know what nocturnal means? So he's, this is usually his bedtime. So usually he's asleep when it's light out and he's, and he's awake when it's dark. So he has very big eyes so they can see in the dark. These are what's called white tree frogs. They come from Australia. Now, who could tell me? Who could tell me what frogs say? What do frogs say? They say ribbit, don't they? Well, these guys, since they come from Australia, they have a really thick Australian accent. So instead of ribbit, what they like to say is, orf, 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 orf. Now, does that mean know why frogs make noise? That's right, they do it to pick up on chicks. So if these guys were hanging out in a pond, they looked up into the trees, they saw these beautiful girl frogs, and they wanted to ask them out on a date. It would look something like this. Now, I would imagine that most of you guys are maybe a little bit young for dating, but it's never too early to practice. So, on the count of three, I want everybody to bark like tree frogs. You do that for me? Okay, ready? One, two, three. Very good. It's okay, ladies. You can ask out the guys, too. There's nothing wrong with that. All right, now, now we know what they sound like. Let me show you how they make noise. You see under his throat there? See how it's kind of going? You see that? Well, frogs have very stretchy skin under their necks. And they can take it and they blow it up like a balloon. And then they take that air, whoo, in their throat. Frogs have stretchy skin. Now, you guys ever blown up a balloon before? Yeah. Now, the more, the more you blow into the balloon, the bigger and the harder the balloon gets. It's because you're creating air pressure. You're putting a lot of air into a small space. Well, they do something very similar with their, with their necks. They blow up the, that air in there, and they take and they push that air through their vocal cords, the things in our throats that make noise. That's how a little animal like this can make a big noise. In fact, did you guys know that the loudest frog in the world is also one of the smallest? It's about this big. It comes from Costa Rica, and it sounds just like this. 
Let me, let me do that for me. Now imagine being able to make that sound so loud you could hear it from two miles away. That's pretty loud. All right, you guys want to feel this one? These guys, they'll eat just about any bug they can get a hold of. But did you know? They, well, actually, that's a great question. I'll answer it in one second. A frog this size, not only will they eat any kind of bug, they'll also, you're really getting me today, aren't you? <laughs> not only will these guys eat bugs, but a frog this size will actually eat baby mice. Now, there are some frogs that do eat ants. You guys ever hear of a poison arrowhead frog? Poison arrowhead frogs are little frogs about this big. They're bright colors, they're beautifully colored, and they're also incredibly poisonous. And they're poisonous not because they can create poison, but because they eat fire ants, which are poisonous. So they actually, they eat the ants, and then they kind of sweat that poison out through their skin, and it makes them poisonous. All right, we're gonna put the frogs away. So let's all say, see you later, froggies. See you later, froggies. What's our, this next bug is a little bit too big for my frogs to eat. This is what's called a Tanzanian giant millipede. Now, we're going we're gonna to touch this one. Now, people often call this a, a centipede. It's actually not a centipede. It's a millipede. Now, a centipede will have as many as 70 legs. But a millipede can have as many as 700 legs. Also, centipedes are always venomous. They have poison, whereas millipedes are never venomous. However, all millipedes are poisonous. That sounds backwards. One can be venomous and one can be poisonous. A rattlesnake is venomous. If a rattlesnake bites you, it will put poison into you. It will envenomate you. Whereas you can eat a rattlesnake and you're fine. A poisonous animal, if it bites you, you're fine. It doesn't do anything. But if you eat them, then you'll get the poison into you. Yeah, I don't think... So, so I always say this, this animal can't hurt you unless you put it in your mouth. So don't put it in your mouth, okay? All right, you guys want to feel this one? I wanted, I wanted everybody to do something for me real quick. I want everybody to feel your arm. Feel your arm. Now, do you guys feel the bones inside? Now, insects don't have any bones inside. They're soft inside. So instead of having bones on the inside, like you and I, all their bones are on the outside. So actually, the reason they are so hard is that any part of a bug that you can see or touch is actually their skeleton. It's what's called an, an exoskeleton. A lot of them can actually shed their skeleton off. Like, a, like a, there's some bugs, when they molt, they shed everything that's on the outside out, and the a bug that crawls out is bigger than they were before. All right, we're going to tuck this guy away. His name is Rebar. So let's all say, so long, Rebar. Now, this next one I've got for you guys is a very strange lizard. This is what's called a male uramastix. <laughs> now, this guy, where he comes from, it is so hot and it's so dry that this guy doesn't drink any water at all. I've had him for six years. He hasn't had, it is a desert, yes. I've had him for six years. He hasn't had a drink of water in six years. It's not that he doesn't need water, but he gets all of the water he needs out of the plants that he eats. He's a herbivore. He only eats fruits and vegetables. And there's enough water in those. No meat. He's a total vegetarian. No meat. Uh, well, he actually uses that for protection. You feel his tail is prickly like a cactus. You feel him? I want to know. Oh, yeah. And the fire. Now, you guys, you guys see his prickly tail? Now, if you made him mad, what he would do is he would pick up that prickly tail like a spiked club and whack! He'd whack you with it. Now, Pineapple here is really friendly. He's never hit anybody. But his girlfriend whacks me all the time. I'll tell you guys, it's just like getting hit with a cactus. It really, really stings. All right, we're going to put this guy away. His name is Pineapple. So let's all say, so long, Pineapple. Don't you, don't you think he looks like a pineapple? This next one is a very special snake. This is what's called a Queensland carpet python. Oh, she's pretty big. There she is. Now, <laughs> well, it's, it's not quite as big as an anaconda. Now, you guys remember how that lizard had a tail that grabbed like a monkey? This is a snake with a tail that grabs like a monkey. She kind of holds on there. Remember how I said there's, there's ground boas, or there's ground snakes, and there's tree snakes? This is actually a tree snake. These guys like to live way up in the trees, and they'll use their tail so they don't actually fall out. Now, since they live in trees, 
and all snakes are carnivores. You can tell me what a carnivore is. Meat eater, very good. Now, since this snake lives in trees, and all snakes are carnivores, they eat meat, what do you think that she likes to eat? These guys love to eat birds, and they love to eat bats. And what's really cool is how they find them. They'll look for them with their eyes by seeing, and with their tongue by smelling. But mostly how they find food is heat. On the bottom of your face, right, there's a hole. They're called heat pits. And they can actually see heat. Oh, I'm sure she's getting that microphone there. Yeah. Wonderful. All right. Now, we're going to put this one away. Her name is Prada. So let's all say so, Prada. So, Prada. Has, has anybody here ever eaten candy? Maybe, <laughs> maybe once or twice, right? Well, what about blue candy? Is everybody blue candy? What happens when we eat a whole bunch of blue candy? Your tongue turns blue, doesn't it? Well, this next guy doesn't actually eat blue candy, but he just naturally has a bright blue tongue. This is what's called a blue tongue skink. Now, people always ask me, they say, lizard boy, how come his tongue is blue? Well, in nature, blue usually means poisonous. Now, this guy is not poisonous, but he likes to try and con convince people that he is. So if you scared him and he wanted to tell you to go away, it would look something like this. Nah. <laughs> let's, have me, let me, let's have me see all of our angry blue tongue skink face. Everybody ready? And nah. Very nice. <laughs> Does it look like a sausage? Uh, they come from Northern Australia. It looks like a sausage. Now what I want everybody to do is I want everybody to feel your fingernail. Feel your fingernail. Now when you feel your fingernail, it kind of feels like his skin, doesn't it? That's because what makes up our fingernails is the same thing that makes up his scales. That's what's called keratin. Now believe it or not, keratin is the same stuff that makes up our hair. So your hair is made of the same thing that makes up lizard scales. So it's very easy to look at a lizard like this and think, I don't have anything in common with him at all. But when you think about it, we have two eyes like he has, two ears, ten fingers, ten toes, and his entire body is covered with the same thing that covers our entire body, keratin. And did you guys know that every snake, lizard, turtle, and tortoise, when it's first born, has a belly button? It's true. When they hatch out of the egg, they have a little yolk sac. That's where they get their food from. That's attached in their belly in the same place where our belly button is. So until they shed their skin, lizards have belly buttons. This next one has actually broken more things in my apartment than all of these other animals put together. So actually, this is a pretty nice library. Maybe we should just skip him and move on to the one after that. Are you sure you want to see him? I mean, he broke, a, he broke a table and a lamp. He actually broke a window the other day. Are you sure you're ready for this? Yeah. All right, if you guys insist, this next one I've got for you guys is what's called a redfoot tortoise. Now, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. He is like a tiny Sherman tank when I turn him loose in the apartment. The concept of a round is so foreign to this animal that if he, if he wanted to get to that camera over there, he would push all of you out of the way to get there. He wouldn't even think about going around. This, uh, this is actually a tortoise. A lot of times people will call this a turtle. In fact, the biggest of all of them is what's called a Galapagos Island tortoise. They get really big. They get huge. But, uh, but there are some sea turtles that get even bigger than this guy. Turtles, turtles can swim in the water or they can walk on land, but tortoises can't swim at all. In fact, in fact, if you were to put Volkswagen here in water that was only this deep, he would drown. He can't swim a stroke. Now, does anybody know how long they can live for? These guys live anywhere from 100 to 150 years. In fact, the oldest living animal that we know about just recently died about, I guess, about eight months ago. It was a 176-year-old Galapagos Island tortoise. When are we going to be able to hold one? Well, the next one we're going to get to hold. That's so let's all say so long, Volkswagen. So long. All right, guys. Now, this next one, I do realize as I do these shows that not everybody's wild about the, the snakes and the lizards.